the second video that we're going to look at now, we're going to start looking at the types of questions that we can be asked in our June exams, in our prelims, as well as our finals. So in video number one, we looked at the tools. So we outlined reductions, co-ratios, negative angles, identities, and we'll get to general solutions in the last video, but there we'll summarize everything and actually look at the types of general solutions and the way that we can answer them as well. So in this video now, we're going to start looking at the questions. And the first set of questions is those that involve diagrams. So whenever we're dealing with questions that involve diagrams, my advice to you is on your question paper, on your answer booklet somewhere, write down the following. You're always going to draw a cast diagram. So cast diagram C, A, S, and T. We know that over here we've got 180 plus theta, 180 minus theta, 360 minus theta, and we've got 90 minus theta over here, which are for our cos ratios, 90 plus theta. Also, make sure that you write down the exceptions. You know that cos of 90 plus theta is negative sine theta. And something that I always used to forget at school for some reason is the fact that cos of negative theta, well, we know that negative angles are actually in this fourth quad quad, cos quadrant. So we know that it would be positive. So cos of negative theta is positive cos of theta. And then also go and write down your special angles. Your special angles are 30, 45, and 9, 45, and 60. And you should know all your special angles off by heart, but let's not kid ourselves. You're probably using a calculator. So just make sure you are able to use them in such a way that you still allow me to give you the marks in the question. So in other words, don't simply plug everything into your calculator. Make sure that you're showing me some sort of intermediate step of working out. All right, so next step. What you also want to make sure of is that in questions where we're dealing with diagram types, there's two types that we can deal with. The first one is where the angle is given. Now, if the angle is given, we know which quadrant it's in. So we know which quad we're dealing with. Because of that, we can go and draw out our diagram straight away for this type of a question. So the diagram, we're in the first quad because 31 degrees is in the first quadrant. So it would look something like this. So we've got our diagram. Remember, we always draw a right angle triangle back down to the x-axis like that. So I don't want you ever to draw a diagram where we've got the triangle in the opposite direction. Don't do that. Then we know that we've got a 31 degree angle over there. And if I give you something like sine of 31 equals the square root of t, we know that it's always over 1. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side will be root t. The hypotenuse will be 1. There's our opposite. There's our hypotenuse. Then we simply go and use Pythagoras, and I'm not going to write that all out for you, but what you should get once you've used Pythagoras properly is that our adjacent side becomes 1 minus t, the square root of 1 minus t. Guys, there is a negative or there might be a positive at some points when we're dealing with this if I give you different sides. But the point is, if you have a positive or negative underneath a square root, you cannot simplify it anymore. So the square root of 1 minus t is as simple as this side will get. Okay, so just bear that in mind. And again, making mistakes there with the diagram would leave every single question wrong in this section. Okay, so just be careful with that. So our goal when we're given the angle is basically to do the following. We're going to use combinations of our reductions, of our co-ratios, as well as our special angles over here to rewrite these angles. Now, guys, remember, if I've got something like in number one, sine 211, 
I cannot change the angle. Okay, so what a lot of people do is they go, oh, 180 minus 211. So they'd literally write this out as 180 minus 211. That makes no sense. All right, we have to keep the angle consistent with the ratio. So in other words, I need to rewrite 211 using all of this good stuff over here. So you should be able to see straight away, because the first one's very easy, is that 211 is actually 180 plus 31. Do you see how I've used the angle over here, that 31 degrees, and I've used a combination over here, this combination over here, to get 211. So the, when I write this out as sine of 180 plus 31, I'm not changing the angle. 180 plus 31 and 211 are the exact same thing. So I haven't changed my ratio in any way. Then I can go and use my reduction. I know 180 plus 31 is in this quadrant over here where only tan is positive. So this would become minus sine of 31 degrees, which would then be minus the square root of t because sine of 31 is the square root of t. So that's the first one, nice and easy. The second one is sine of 62 degrees. Now for some of you it will be fairly obvious what I've done here, for others it won't. So when you're stuck like this in an exam, you start to break the question down bit by bit so that you can answer it. We're going to start off by then looking at our reductions. So go ahead, take out your calculator, and when you've got your calculator out, we're going to do the following. So your calculator is out, and you're basically going to be testing it for yourself. So go and check 180 minus 31, no. What we're doing is we're using combinations of this stuff over here to figure out where that 62 comes from. Now you may look at it and think, oh, okay, do you know what? Maybe 90 minus 31 will give us our number. No, it gives us 59. Okay. So again, maybe you think maybe it's a part of a special angle. So we'll go 30 plus 31. Maybe that'll give us our angle. No, that gives us 61. But look at number three. Maybe that'll help us later on. Maybe we can go, what else could we do? Maybe 45 plus 31. In every case here, I'm using combinations to get my angle. I'm not getting anything. Then you move to your identities. So try 31 times 2. Do you see we get 62? Now you may have seen that very quickly, but if you haven't, it's important to be able to use your calculator and run through combinations of everything over here and everything over here to get whatever's inside that angle over there. So sine 62, we've now proved it is going to be sine of 2 times 31 and we know that that's a sine double angle you should know your double angle which is 2 sine of 31 times cos of 31 we use our diagram so it's going to be 2 sine 31 is root t cos of 31 from our diagram is going to be 1 minus root t times over 1 so we're going to get 1 minus root t and there's your answer. You can simplify a little bit more if you wanted to and get an answer that looked a little bit like this. But again, I wouldn't say that's absolutely necessary unless the question explicitly says, prove that sine 62 equals this thing over here. Okay, number three, sine 61. Now often number three will tend to be the more difficult one because you're not gonna see it straight away. So again, your calculator's out, and you're looking for combinations of any of these over here, any of these and these over here, that would give you 61. And we did it in the previous question. We figured out that basically 30 plus 31 is 61. So I could rewrite this over here as sine, 
31 plus 30. Now that's a compound angle. So I can use my compound angle formula and get sine 31 times cos of 30 plus sine 30 cos 31. Substitute in my answers. I know that sine 31 is root t. Cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. Plus sine of 30 is a half. And cos of 31 is root t minus 1. Or 1 minus t, I should write it. 1 minus t. And so that then is root t times root 3 plus root 1 minus t all over 2. You go ahead and look at how I did the algebra. And we can actually group these two under the same root or the same radical. And so my final answer there could actually be the square root of 3t plus the square root of 1 minus t all over 2. So that's type 1 of the diagram questions where the angle is given. Now let's go and have a look at type 2. So the type 2 diagram questions is when the angle is not given. Now if that's the case, the question that you have to start off by asking yourself is which quadrant are we dealing with? So which quadrant are we in? My advice to you, go and draw out the quadrant again. So we have got cos or root 5 cos of theta equal to p. Let's get the ratio by itself. Always get the ratio by itself. So that would give us cos theta, now the ratio is by itself. I'm taking the root 5 over, so we'd get p over root 5. This is the adjacent, this is the hypotenuse. Okay. Do you also see that in this over here, we've got that cos theta is greater than zero. It's positive, right? Because this piece over here is positive. So the ratio must be positive. So go and mark it off for yourself. C-A-S-T. We know that cos is positive over here and over here. So we put a tick in each. But we're also given an extra piece of information that says to us theta is between 180 and 360. So 180 and 360, there's 180, there's 360. So we put a tick in each. Do you see how we've got two ticks in the fourth quadrant? So we know that our diagram, our angle sits in this fourth quadrant. So our line goes down and we join the x-axis with our 90 degrees always joining the x-axis. So our angle going around from there to there is theta. And we know that our adjacent side is p and our hypotenuse is root 5. So we can go ahead then and do a bit of Pythagoras and we're going to get that our opposite side, oops, that's our adjacent there, our opposite side is going to be 5 minus p squared. But remember, guys, we're dealing with the negative y-axis. So if that's the case and we're dealing with the negative y-axis, this entire piece has to be negative. So in other words, our opposite side is minus 5 minus p squared. Don't forget things like that. Always look at which part of the axis you're dealing with so that you don't get negative answers that are incorrect. Okay, so now that we've got that, the question says determine an expression in terms of p for number one, which is tan theta. So the first one is easy. Go to your diagram. Tan we know is opposite over adjacent or y over x. So we would get minus 5 minus p squared over p. And there's your answer for tan. Nice and easy. Second one. We've got cos 
of 2 theta. Cos of 2 theta, but we are dealing with theta, a single angle. So we have to reduce this. So we reduce it and we get cos of 2 theta. And in this particular case, what I want you to think of is which one would be the easiest to use. So we know we can either use any one of these. We know that cos 2 theta can either be cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. It can be 2 cos squared theta minus 1, or it can be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Which one would I want to use? Well, if I use this one, I'm going to have to use this and this. It becomes a little bit messy. Whereas if I use the second one, this one over here, well, I've actually kind of got an answer for that already. I've got that cos theta is p over 5, so all I'd have to do is square it, multiply it by 2, and then minus 1, using that middle one over here. So I would suggest you doing that. So changing this to 2 cos squared theta minus 1, which would then be 2 times p over root 5 all squared minus 1, which would be 2p squared over 5 minus 1. Guys, you would get this answer by using any one of these three over here. Again, I chose this one because I already had cos theta. And so to avoid maybe making a mistake if I had done something wrong in my diagram, or to avoid having to use a lot of algebra, I picked the one that I saw was easiest. Again, this will come to you the more you practice. So do these examples with the diagram questions. They can usually be for five or six marks, breaking it down. I think in this particular example, the first one was for two marks. The second one was for three marks. So there's basically five easy marks for doing basic trig that you've been practicing since grade 10. In the next video, what we'll look at is reductions and more of the simplification type questions within trig. And those can end up being a little bit more tricky. So let's have a look at those in the next video.